Hello, happy day, happy life, happy journey. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Just enjoying a few moments here while people start to join us. Looking forward to sharing with you today's uh, idea, today's topic, today's uh, little download for our Facebook Live. So hi, welcome everybody as people are starting to join, entering the rooms of our consciousness. Welcome to, uh, as we say at Agape, to the loving room. Welcome to my loving room. <laughs> so grateful that everybody's joining. Thanks for tuning in. Today's topic, today's topic is uh, hello from Montreal. Hello, hello, Dorota, Esther, um, and Jennifer. Hey. So today's topic is, is your cup upside down? Donna from Calgary. Looking forward to having you today. Thank you. So the topic, Is Your Cup Upside Down, refers to a biblical quote from Malachi, uh, the prophet Malachi. And uh, it is um, something, like it says, uh, Prove me now, if I will not open the doors of heaven, the gates of heaven, the windows of heaven, and pour a blessing that there shall not be enough room for you to receive it. Right? This is the... Um, this is the promise of the divine. Hello, Autumn and Mia and David. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, so prove me now, the, the host of hosts says, that if you are willing to accept it, if you're willing to accept all the good, that I shall pour a blessing on you that is too big to be received. You won't be able to contain it. Right? So this is the I this is the topic today. Is our cup upside down? Are we open and available? Are we lifting our chalice of life and our bowl of goodness? Are we lifting it to receive that which is constantly being given? And a couple of things came to mind here uh, for me. And the first is, it's never what you think it is. It's never what you think. Let's just, we can say it's never what you think it is. And we can also say it's never what you think, right? So two things are being said there. It's never what you think it is, meaning that it's not what it appears to be. It, not, not, it never is exactly what it appears to mean, what you, uh, what you think it means, what it appears to be, um, what others are thinking about me, or it's never really about the argument that I'm having right now. Uh, it's never really about the, the situation that's really occurring. There's always something underneath. There's something more, right? So it's, it's never what you think. And then it's never what you think it is, and it's never what you think, meaning there's a, a, another phrase there. It's never what you think, meaning it's never what, it's not what we're thinking, it's what we're feeling. The universe doesn't hear us. If we're going to open ourselves up, if we're going to raise our cup of acceptance, uh, the universe feels us. It doesn't hear us, right? Uh, so in this way, it's not what I think, it's what I feel. So there's two things going on in that statement. It's never what you think it is. So let's talk about feeling or, and vibration. I was listening to Satguru today, um, this morning, and he was talking about the mantras. Mantras as a, um, as a mathematical equation of frequency. That the mantra, not only the vibrational, like they're designed specifically to elicit a vibrational response in the body and in the field around us, right? So, so that's the, the first thing is the universe's vibration and frequency, like the paintings behind me, the posters behind me. This is our, our energetic body. And we are, um, and we are in that feeling of vibration and frequency. So if we're gonna lift our cup, if we're going to make sure our cup isn't turned upside down, we must uh, realize that we live and move and have our beingness in this creative medium, this medium that uh, responds to our thinking. It responds to our feeling and that we have an effect on it. We have a direct effect on it. There's something called the observer effect. And in quantum physics or even in science, if you take an electron microscope and you look and observe an atom, just in the act of, act of observation, you change the mass of that atom and it changes and alters the trajectory. So our feeling, our thinking, our seeing, our participation in the creative medium uh, is directly responded to 
It responds to us, to our feeling, to the way that we're uh, feeling about the vibrational frequency that we're sending out. So the technology of a mantra, the technology of affirmation, the technology of prayer, the technology of lifting ourselves above confusion is meant to keep us in this vibration of prove me now, prove me now. Can you open up to receive more good? Because it's never what you think it is. The situation never is as bad as we think it is. It never is uh, what, what it appears to be. Take, uh, for example, the, this divine challenge, right? This is a divine challenge that, that, that the universe is saying, maybe things are better. Maybe things are better than they appear to be. Can we experiment with our own minds, with our own thinking? Can we come to a place right now, right in the midst of everything that's going on in the world? Can you and I come to a place in our mind, in an experiment? Prove me now, in this experiment, can we come to a place where uh, we really believe and feel down in our bones, feel that there's enough to go around. Can, can we do that? Can, can, will you experiment that with me? There's an invitation there to experiment if we can feel like there's enough for everybody. You know, when you, when you sit down to eat, uh, and, and we want to say a prayer before we eat, right? And, and you know, when I was a kid, it was, bless us, uh, um, Bless us, O Lord, for these I gifts we are about to receive from thy bounty through Christ our Lord. Amen. That was our prayer, right? My dad said it every time. Nicole, hello. William, hello, everybody. Donna. So, um, but now when I sit down to eat, I first think about all the synchronicities. My prayer over the food is, first of all, thinking about all that it took to get that food to my table, like how blessed and supported and loved I am. Right. And then thinking about, you know, thinking about the, the, the food itself, like that it's bringing us, bringing me nutrients. Like I can see it. I see it, new, uh, you know, delivering nutrients to my cells, rejuvenating my body, giving me what I need to live and thrive and survive. And then we take a moment to hold in our awareness a world that works for the best and highest individual and collective good. Can I see it? Can I see it? Can I feel right there with that food in front of me, now that I've become thankful for the food, can I feel that there really is enough to go around? That is how we make a difference. And, and we're gonna go out and give somebody something to eat, right? It's not like it's just holding it in consciousness. Yes, we have to hold it in consciousness, but we have to also, um, there's right action, divine right action falls out of our right seeing, right? That's natural consequence. That's a natural extension. But first we got to feel it because there's miraculous ways in which things congeal. Providence moves in and an unforeseen blessings occur when we can really send out that vibration, that frequency of all, all needs are met. I can feel that there really is enough. There really is. There's enough food. We throw away enough food each year in this country to feed everybody. We throw away enough food. So, so here, here the, uh, the prophet Malachi is telling us, open up your, your cup to receive something too big because our view is too myopic. We see too narrowly. Can we open up our awareness to receive something that even though it doesn't appear to be because what appears to be isn't real. Here's the example of that. Okay, so let's say we're out in nature. We're out in the forest, right? And, and the forest might look a little chaotic. There might be a, a dead underbrush and living trees and dead trees. There's beauty and everything there, but it might look like it's not so well organized, right? right? Maybe there's some things out of balance. Some trees are fighting for space with others and all that. And then we go to a, a manicured garden, maybe at a really nice hotel resort or uh, somebody's, you know, we're visiting an old castle in England. And you see this beautiful manicured garden and you think, well, there's order and balance and harmony in the garden. Look, it's all ordered. But if you let that garden go for a month, it would look completely disordered. But if you go to the forest where there's a fallen tree and some dead brush and some stuff on the ground and, and the trees may be fighting and maybe there's a, a strangler tree going around the one tree and it looks like this is disharmony. But that forest endures for a lot longer than the manicured garden. So what appears to be ordered, the manicured garden, really is a illusion, and that which appears to be chaotic is really ordered, balanced, and harmonious. 
that's the same thing, that it's not what you think it is. It's not what it appears to be. So, so the experiment then is to, despite appearances, hold in our awareness that which we seek to bring about. What we think about, we bring about. So if it's uh, a world where a kind and just global society where uh, there's not uh, uneven police force expressed? Is it a kind and just global society where um, uh, underprivileged societies are given the resources that other more privileged societies or cultures or communities have? Whatever it is, is it your own prosperity? Is it your own health and wholeness? Hold that awareness and feel it. Allow the vibrational frequency of that to extend from your being. Just like, I mean, I love these paintings because it's such a great expression of how we participate in the energetic field. Now, this is also saying that even the ineffable spirit, even the all in all, the, the unimaginable mystery of life itself requires us to receive it. It requires us to accept it. We must turn our cup right side up. Turn the cup right side up. I like that. <laughs> we can't have our, our bowl of acceptance upside down. Otherwise, the blessings just flow right over us. But if we hold our cup of acceptance right side up, we can catch the blessings even though it's too big to be contained. So even, even the lavish the lavish abundance of the universe requires us to accept it and receive it. So what lens are we looking through? That's the, that's the feeling tone. Am I looking through the lens? Am I interpreting it? Uh, in what way? You know, here, here's the thing. It's not what you think it is. It's not what it appears to be. My niece is under 25. She thinks she's 24. And, and, on the cover of a magazine, health and fitness magazine, that's how healthy and fit she is. And she is in, just out of the hospital from COVID. And, uh, um, and, and she's really struggling. She's going through it right now. She's going to be okay, but it's really, really painful. Uh, very debilitating. She can barely talk. And she, I mean, she was a, is a vibrant and healthy person. Now, Back to the topic, what lens are we looking through? It's not what it appears to be. So when I think of my niece, Charlotte, I don't see someone suffering from COVID. I see whole and complete. I just see her as whole and complete. My sister had a knee surgery recently, Loretta. And I don't see Loretta with a swollen knee. I see her knee, I picture it in my mind. I see the bones growing back together and the tissues and the tendons. I see it, I feel it. I feel the health and wholeness, the vibrancy of her body rejuvenating itself, right? This is how we must proceed in the world so that we don't get caught up in appearances. The garden may appear to be manicured, but it's an illusion. And that forest, which seems like it's in disorder, is actually harmonious and balanced. So I'm going to turn away from the appearances and anchor into what I know is true. What I know is true is that there is a singular force, a source, an energy that is always perfect, that is always expressing itself, and it can express through me and through you. It's all around. And I'm going to open my cup of acceptance. I'm going to open the windows of my soul to receive that which is coming always. It's always being broadcast. Are we there to hear it? Are we open and available? There was a guru once that said, the love of the, God, of the divine is always shining on you. You just have to open your blinds, right? <laughs> we just have to open the blinds. That was a really bad Apu interpretation, uh, <laughs> impersonation, and I hope it wasn't offensive. But if it was, I so apologize. But really, we've got to open the blinds uh, to the windows of our soul to receive that which is constantly being given. The unreality, you know, the unreality of appearances isn't that what my niece is experiencing. We don't deny it. We're not silly. We don't go, oh yeah, that's not true. We're not Henny Penny, or not Henny Penny, but uh, putting our heads in the, in, we're not an ostrich, putting our, sand, our head in the sand, going, oh, nope, everything's fine. She's not suffering from COVID. That's not even true. No, 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 there's suffering. There's pain. Let's acknowledge that. And, and I turn away from that for I know it's just an appearance and I see through that to a truth that she's perfect, whole, and complete, that there's something emerging 
We're opening the blinds to see, to receive that which is already being given. Wholeness. Because the spirit is whole, complete. Because the spirit is complete, abundant. Because the spirit is abundant. This is, this is the nature of the divine and we must open ourselves up to receive it. So, we can look out on the world today and in our lives today and open the windows of our soul to let the breeze in, let the light in, so that the great God of the universe can pour out a blessing that is too big. Is our cup upside down or right side up? Let's write, let's write this ship. Let's open ourselves up to say no matter what the appearances are that's happening in our lives, in the world, in our relationships, in our job, no matter what the appearances are, we are hanging out in the vibration, in the feeling that all my needs are met right now. Right now. All is well. Right now. Nothing, I, 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 all, all, all my needs are met in this moment. So, so are we opening to receive that which is being given? Now, step two, see it for others. This is real spiritual growth and development. When we move off of just, I mean, we've got to take care of ourselves first and then the other. Love is, M. Scott Peck had the best definition of love I've ever heard uh, in the book, A Road Less Traveled. He said, love is uh, the, the extension of oneself for the genuine care and nurturing of your own and another's spiritual, mental, and physical well-being. So first, I've got to take care of my own spiritual, mental, mental and physical well-being, and then I can, I, can, I can see that for others. And so this is the next step of, accept, of our cup of acceptance. We can't just hold our chalice up and receive just for ourselves. The blessing's too big for us to contain it. That would be selfish. But once we, we can anchor into our own spiritual, mental, and physical well-being, then we can open up to see it for others. Step two in our spiritual growth and expansion is seeing it for everyone. For surely the good that I have isn't just for me. It's for all, for we are all one and there's enough to go around. And when I really see, it, it, it'd be like, uh, uh, you don't look at, <laughs> at your, your fingers on your hand and be like, oh yeah, you know what? I need to be kinder to my pinky, right? Because, uh, you know, I'm just, you know, not being uh, as aware of it. No, you wouldn't even say that because your pinky is part of you. You wouldn't cut it off. Like, you know what? If we cut that off, it'll be fine. I won't miss it very much. you like, that's part of me. I'm not cutting that off. I'm not doing anything to harm it. I want all the good for my pinky that I want for my thumb, right? So, in the same way, if we really saw our oneness with everyone, and with everything, could we really hurt anything? Could we really hurt anyone? We wouldn't hurt ourselves. Well, sometimes we do. But, you know, in, 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 in most cases, we wouldn't damage ourselves in the way that we are willfully damaging others. So the next step of our expansion and growth is moving out from the me I, me, I, mine, to the we. So I see this for everyone. I see, I see this um, blessing comes to us and we see it multiplied and increasing, healing and blessing and enriching. That's what the world needs. This is the vibration. The universe feels us so we can send out that vibration of healing for everyone, healing for our nation, healing for our politicians, healing for our world, healing for our bodies, healing, right? The soul level, we can begin to expand our awareness. It's not just about me. It's about we because we're all one, like the fingers. Of, my mother used to say that. My sister would say, Mom, I'm your favorite, right? And my mother would say, like the fingers of my hand. <laughs> God bless you, Cecilia. Like the fingers of my hand, who, which one is more precious? Well, I know the truth. My, my finger was more <laughs> precious. And, and later when my mom had, you know, dementia was really kind of kicking in towards the end of her life, my sister asked that question. And she said, oh, no, JJ's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, so we step into this conscious evolution, right? That like the fingers of my hand, who is more precious? Uh, what we want for ourselves, we want for everybody, 
right? And then we take this into our days. We take this into our day, into our post, when we're posting on Instagram and Facebook, and into our interactions, into our political speaking, into our judgments and opinions, into wearing masks or not. We take, we take this into everything that we are uh, one with all and that which I want for myself, I want for everybody. The good that I see for myself is the good I see for everybody. And here's a hint. When you see somebody else experiencing great good, when you see somebody else, like I used to be like, uh, oh, that's really great. I'm so glad you just made all that money. Or I'm so glad somebody would call me, dude, I'm so glad I bought Tesla. You know, now it's up 300%. I just made a ton of money. And I'm like, oh, I didn't, right? But here's what, or when I was in sales and somebody else would make a sale and I wouldn't, I'd feel like, oh, I didn't get that sale. Here's the secret. If, if your good is their good, then their good is your good. So there's an opportunity to see every great house you drive by, every great car, every success that someone has. You know, someone's having great success in their business right now and your business might be suffering because of, of COVID, right? Well, you can see their success as your success. You can actually shift. You can shape shift that success and call it towards you because it works both ways. If I'm sending out the good, I can bring it on in too. Right, so this is, this is uh, the, the, the idea that we can move into carrying this into our everyday life, everyday life. And now we are enriching uh, all, we're anchoring this in all aspects of our life. We're feeling it and we're not getting caught up in appearances. So this is the talk today. Is your cup upside down? Are you are we closing ourselves off to, to not receiving the good because of our limited thinking and our limited feeling, right? First, we got to think about it to make it, to feel it, right? But we, then we feel it. We drop out of here and into here, out of the head and into the heart and really feel that good, that, that good that you want for yourself, feeling it also for others and the good that others are experiencing instead of jealousy or envy, we can say, your good is my good. I accept that good. In fact, I need nothing, uh, everything, and I need never, wor no, I'm sorry, I need never worry again. I need never worry again because I, I can afford anything I desire. I need never worry again because all has been given to me. I need never worry again. Look, there's an example. Prove me now. There's abundance flowing over there. Can I open myself up to receive that abundance? Can I raise my chalice and lift my bowl to receive? Let me right side up that chalice and open up to receive the blessing that is too big to be contained so that it's not just my blessing, but it's everyone's blessing. All right. That's our talk today. I'm so grateful, so grateful, so grateful, so grateful for this opportunity to share with you. Thank you so much for your attention and for tuning in. I love you. I'm so grateful to uh, be with you and I'll see you, um, let's see, next uh, Monday, we're doing our uh, wonderful um, Rise Up Evolutionary Conversations on Facebook Live at 1 p.m. Pacific time. And our guest next Monday will be Jordan Rivers of Spirit Science. So check that out because Spirit Science is super cool. And then on Tuesday, I get to do Jerry's Facebook Live. So I'm going to step into Jerry's uh, big, big shoes uh, for Tuesday. And then we'll be back on Thursday. So um, we're going to be talking to each other a lot. Many blessings. Open up and receive, open the blinds to receive all the light, all the love, all the joy, all the beauty, all the wholeness, all the excellence, all the creativity. It's yours. It's mine. It's ours. And so it is. Thank you.